dust. What is this all about? And even scholars, this beautiful analogy, they said even shaitan can have an excuse. Look how they looked at it. Really? They had, yeah. At least shaitan was created differently. Different material. And you can say fire is better than uh, uh, clay. It is not, but you can at least make this analogy. But a human being is all the same, all from the same source. Why you're arrogant? Arrogant if they're from different country, arrogant if they speak different language, if they're different parts of the country, if they are from the village and I am from the city, if I graduated from this university and they graduated from that, right? If our children, we have to make a point in a gathering, your children graduated from this university. That's arrogance. You want to show people you're better than them. Disease. Now, the other one. Hadi, it's, if you tell me you don't have it, I will say I'm going to talk to you outside. <laughs> the last one, he said, love of this world and power. Mm. <laughs> Who doesn't want to have power? Who, who doesn't? Show me. And power doesn't mean you're going to be the head of a state. That's power. You're at home. Home, your house. One of the biggest problems in marriage is? Exactly. Who has the power? You're laughing. We're not going to go there. Right? Power. I said it and they didn't hear me. They didn't listen to me. And love of this dunya. And the more Allah is giving us, the more miserable humanity is. Am I correct? We are, you look at mental illness these days. I don't know again about Malaysia, but I can tell you about the United States. Way more than 40 years ago. Why? And we have way more. These days, anything you want, subhanAllah, anything you want, it's in your phone. You order, you are searching, anything. It takes you to me. And these days, we don't even search. We just say, Siri, hey Siri. What do you say here? I don't know. Do you say also, hey Siri? OK, right? And she apologized. <laughs> Right? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> and we want, and we are, we want more. Have you seen when the new, any new thing comes out? And we just bought it last year or two years ago. Any of the new technology comes out. We want to go and get it. Why? Why? The love of dunya. As Rasulullah said to the Sahaba, what really, what makes me worry about you is this dunya, that the dunya will be open to you. You have it. So this is the love of dunya. And no soundness of the heart. Again, this is Imam Ibn al-Qayyim. Unless the, how, the heart is safe from these five. So that the, any of the ones I shared with you before, don't talk about sound heart. We have work to do. And he said, you can claim easily your heart is sound if you have these five, not one. You need to have them all. In, in the tasky and the purification of the heart, that science, it is not one and two. It's either none or all. The process can be one and two. But when you get to the point, you say, I am close to Allah. I am one of the wali of Allah. I am the real friend of Allah. There is no impurity. It is all. So let's say Qalbu Salim. He is the, you cannot say, my heart is sound unless you have these five. So the opposite. Number one. Nothing in your heart. Actually, the definition of Al-Qalbu Salim, and I'm going to say it in Arabic and I'll translate. Al-Qalb ladhi salama min kulli shay'in ma'ad Allah. The heart that has nothing in it but Allah. 
nothing but Allah. And one of the scholars said, it is like the strainer. You know the strainer we use in the kitchen? And you strain things? They say, the qalbu salim, this is going to make it very easy, bi'idhnillah, to at least grasp the, the point. Al qalbu salim is like a strainer. Anything you put in it comes out except Allah. Except Allah. So he said, these fives, the Qalbu Salim does not have anything but the monotheism, Allah only. It is not Allah and my children. It is not Allah and my career. It is not Allah and my bank account. It is not Allah and my house. Yeah, you're still struggling. When it becomes Allah and Allah only, then Qalbu Salim, two. There is nothing in that heart, and pay attention to the nothing, in that heart that contradicts the sunnah, contradict the sunnah of Rasul How do we look at the sunnah these days? Tell me. Sunnah. I see young people, I see people, let's say not only young, finished salah, jumped on their phone. And then they stood up and walked after Maghrib, after Isha. And says, are you going to pray? That's sunnah. Then don't talk about qalbu salim. And I will end and remind me if I forget. Why do I have to worry about al qalbu salim? And is it possible? Or this is a theory. This is impossible. So anything you do, and you don't do specially, you say he didn't do it, alayhi salatu wasalam. I say this to myself. I'm not going to invent the wheel. There is so many things in the sunnah. Let me practice. And then I will do something else. So number one, nothing but Allah. Two, nothing but the sunnah of Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam. Three, there is no desire. Now it's getting very hard. In my heart and yours, there is no desire that contradicts what Allah wants. I want to fast Monday and Thursday. But I love, I don't know what you drink in Malaysia. Is it coffee or tea? Okay, so there is different opinion. <laughs> Right? The scholars differ. Okay, that's fine. Fine, it's okay. So let's say this is the tea group or this is the coffee group. Doesn't matter. Right? So you come in and you want to fast. Want to drink a coffee is a desire. It's halal. Of course, provided the coffee, you didn't steal the coffee. But in general, it's a halal drink. So you want to drink, and then it is Monday, and you have this dialogue. Here, it's Monday, it's a shahru haram, let's pray, let's fast Monday. And you hear something inside you saying, yeah, but you know, I didn't drink my coffee before Fajr. <laughs> or I didn't drink the water, and I'm going to get very tired. Now you have this, two forces. If this force won, you hear something in you says, the most beloved deed to Allah is fasting. Fasting is for Allah, and he will reward you. You have a qalb unsari, because you won. If the coffee, or the tea, or the food, or the water, or whatever it is, again, I'm talking about if you are okay. You're not getting tired. You, you didn't say, let me try and see. You just assumed you cannot do it. Then the qalb salim has an issue. That the qalb salim is that everything, all desires is there that, that are okay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which most of it is not. The next one. How many of you, show me hands. The good news is you don't see each other. I see you all, so don't worry. <laughs> and I think the camera on me, not on you, so also don't worry. How many of you says, can say, now, 
that I am, I remember Allah. I'm going to make it easier. I remember Allah more than I remember dunya. Zero hand. Any time, and I'm not saying 24 hours. I didn't say all the time. I said more. Any time that I and you in state of heedlessness, I'm so occupied by the life without having Allah in this thought to make it practical. So let's say I have an exam tomorrow. Let's say I'm going to have a baby tomorrow. Let's say you have a really um, important interview tomorrow. Um, of course, I am thinking of it. But if there is no Allah in this thought, then I'm not remembering him. Meaning, something in you says, you're not going to pass. This is a very difficult exam. Then inside you, you hear Allah says, you know what? Nothing is impossible for Allah. Then you're not heedless. You're not heedless. But when Allah doesn't come in the equation, in the statement, then I'm a person who is heedless. So if my heart, the heedlessness, more than remembering Allah, my qalb, my heart is not serene. The opposite is true. Drinking, water. You said, Bismillah, you're a dhakir. You remembered Allah. You said, Alhamdulillah, even if it is habit, you remembered. You open the door and say, Bismillah. You're a dhakira. So if the amount of Allah and his remembrance is more than none or not, then your heart is sound. That's easy, isn't it? Somehow. Maybe. Because <laughs> you're all looking at me. I was like, really? <laughs> now, no thoughts. That's the last one. How a thought that contradict what Allah said and what the Rasul salatu wassalam said. Do you have these issues these days here also? Do you have issues says hijab is not fard? Do you have it here? It's not in the Quran, it's not in the Sunnah. Do you hear that? If your thoughts goes with that direction, Qalbu Salim have left already. It has to be your thoughts. Doesn't mean I am not going to entertain this idea because I hear it. We live. So I'm going to say, really? Okay, let me go and look it up. And then you do your homework. Or you go and ask a reputable, trustworthy scholar. And the scholar gives you the evidence. Done. Then your qalb is salim. If you still, and then finally says, because I like it, so I'm not, I said, no, I'm not convinced. Qalb al-Saleem left. Or you don't have it. Is it easy? Is it clear, number one? The five, let's say it one more time. Nothing in your heart but Allah. So there is no association. Children is not above Allah. Beauty is not above Allah. Wealth is not above Allah. It's all go through, remember the strainer? Go through Allah and leave. But he stays. Two. Sunnah. And don't you ever say it's Sunnah. You belittle it. Just to say this, I don't know if it is here, but I'm just saying in general. Imagine you say words or a statement, and the statement is very true. And I and you are not a Rasul, and people belittle your words. How do you feel? How do you feel? Sad, betrayed, who, do they, who they are to, to, to say this to me. Imagine the Rasul, the one who's going to take me and you in his hand and get to Jannah. And I say it's Sunnah. Sunnah. Three, your desires and your thoughts. Desires and thoughts, which one win? In general, let me tell you a daily struggle you and I have. Let's be, as I say to myself, let's be honest. We are always, there is always a fight inside you and me. True or false? I call it the Fajr fight. You know what is the Fajr fight? What is the Fajr fight? The alarm goes on. And I, here, you're, you're much better. There it's 420. The Fajr 420 and Aisha is 10. 
So you barely have four hours of sleep. So the alarm goes on. There is two dialogue. Get up, it's Fajr. Give me five minutes. <laughs> but you're going to sleep and you're not going to wake up. No, I will wake up. Yes? Alhamdulillah. Here you go. The fight is good news. Because you have the good side. So don't always look down at yourself. You have the good side. The question who wins. And that's also a hadith of Rasulullah the meaning of that every heart has two forces or lamma, two like two grasps. One from shaitan and one from the malak. And one from the angel. So if I get up and went and do my wudu, did my wudu, and I prayed fajr, who won? The angel. If I slept, and I'm not talking about one time, the norm, then the shaitan. So always think of this. When you want to put a, a, a microscope on your heart, look at who's talking. This is how I say to myself. Who's talking? Who said don't do it? Or say do it? If what I want to do, and the answer is yes, pleasing to Allah, angel is talking. If what I want to do, I like it, I love it, but it's not pleasing to Allah, and I know that for sure. It's not different opinion then the shaitan is talking. So look at this. Now I'm going to take you really difficult ones. Are you ready? Or you got tired? Or you're not ready for difficult things? Fine. Okay. Bismillah. The first sign that you have a heart that's salim. It's 12 of them. So we may cover a few today. Inshallah, we'll cover tomorrow. And then we'll take you through the diseases. Number one, let me ask you a question so you will understand it easily. How many of you, every single day, now pay attention to the question, every single day you think of al-akhirah, you think of the day of judgment? Wallahi, it's very honest crowd, Hada. How many of you, every day, think of the grave? When you enter, I will enter and you will enter. Al-Qalb al-Saleem, sound. Look at crystal or a vase or a cup or a glass. Clear, clean, nothing, nothing. You see through. That heart, if you have it or I have it, Ya Rabbi, Ameen. Yartahil an dunya they say. Move away from this dunya. What does that mean? What makes you cry? What makes human being cry, usually? Loss of something. Could be material, could be human being, could be job. Loss of something, right? Sadness. Betrayal. Right? Am I correct? Moving away from a place you love. Separation from somebody you love. That's dunya. That's life. How many of us cry for only one reason because we miss Allah because I miss talking to him I miss Ramadan I miss being in Jannah how many that's what he's talking about when your focus your heart your thought and you are living here and living well living dunya full but the focus is Akhirah. I say this always. People come to me. Some of you may know I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. So people, especially medical students, come to me and says, I want to be, we call it in the state, OBGYN. Everything in the United States has to be summarized. We don't have enough time to say the words full. <laughs> everything has to be, everything. Kuala Lumpur KL. It's too long, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. If you go there, you will remember this. So people ask me, um, he said, I want to be an OBGYN. Actually, this is a true story. This is a son of one of my dear friends. Really, I love the, the young man. And he's actually now in college. This was two years, three years ago. And I said, uh, what do you want to be? He was 14 or 15. He said, I want to be a doctor. Everybody wants to be a doctor. 
It's like the key of Jannah in medical school. <laughs> this is what I say. And I said, why do you want to be a doctor? He said, so I can help people. I said, really? He said, yeah, so sure. And I said, why don't you be a garbage man? Imagine we don't have a garbage man. What's going to happen? We're going to live in garbage. Be honest with yourself. Because dunya in medicine, I'm one of them, brings you a lot. But if I want to be an OBGYN, really, and Allah knows me, because it's a fardu kifaya, it's a collective duty. Because every Muslim community has to have an obstetrician, gynecologist, nurse, especially female, nurse, female, labor and delivery nurse, teacher, all this, then that's for akhirah. Let alone if you didn't want to do it, or it was hard. I want to be a successful businessman. Nothing wrong with that. This is what I want you to learn. Islam teach me to live this life fully. But the focus is my akhirah. So there is nothing wrong with being rich. Nothing wrong with being educated in a place of power. On the contrary, المؤمن القوي خير من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير. That's hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Strong believer is better than the weak believer. And here is not strong and weakness in faith because he used mu'min. Both are believers. Both there is goodness, but the strong one. So you have power, you have money, you have education, you have children. All these are power. People want it, right? But how are you getting it? And where are you using it? If my focus, Ya Allah, and I said this very recently to somebody who Allah gave them a lot of money, I mean a lot of money, and they are using it for the sake of Allah, unconditional. I mean, things you wonder, I was like, what kind of a heart these people have? That's the time I looked at them and I said, this is the only time in my life I wish I had that money. And then in me, I was like, don't ask for something. You don't know what will happen. Because we change. So يرتحل عن الدنيا. You stay away from dunya. It doesn't mean you're going to leave everything and you're going to go in this forest by yourself, in this small home, and you're going to be worshipping Allah. Most of us cannot do this. And who's going to يعمر هذه الأرض? Who's going to flourish this earth? Who's going to take care of this earth? Is when your focus is akhirah. When the when the job you have or the money, the deal that you're going to get, in it, there's something will take you away from Allah. The answer is no, even if this is the best deal in my life. When the man that is proposed to you to get married and you really want to get married, everything is fine, but there's something not pleasing to Allah or you're worried that he may take you away from Allah, and the answer is no because of that reason, then Akhirah is your focus. Now, how many of you can say, Akhirah is my focus? Is it possible? This is, this is what I need you to say. Yes, it is. If I only change my focus, and don't you think this is a paved road? This is not easy, because you're going to be going against two forces. One is you, me. Me wanted it. Me wants it. And the society. Society. Why are you doing this? Are you crazy? This is how we say it there. Allah is giving you, and they give you all the excuses for doing it. But when you say, when I'm in that grave, that's why I asked you about the grave. When I am in that grave, None of this will help me. Keep focusing on the akhirah. Keep thinking of the day. And this talk to me before anybody else, that I am going to be standing in front of him alone. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدَ Each one of them will come to Allah alone. Allah said this in Surah Maryam. When I am there, I want to say, Ya Allah, I lived for you. I studied for you. 
I married for you. I had children for you. I wanted to be beautiful for you. Then don't worry. May Allah give me all dunya then. Most of us, is not, that's not the case. Most of us, when dunya comes to us, what happens? Akhirah, out of the window. And that's why he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, what worries me about you, that the dunya will open to you. This is to the sahaba, to the companion. So don't say, I don't want money. If Allah gave it to you, take it. But say, Ya Allah, make me use it in the way that pleases you. If Allah give you children, don't say, they are taking me away from Allah because now I can't do my qiyam. No. You're a mother, the qiyam will be much less because you have children you have to take care of. That's your road to Jannah. Don't say, now I have two jobs because I have to take care of my family. That's your road to Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those, Ya Rabbi Ameen.